impressions where? Somebody ought to praise God.
thank God you've been set free from the law of sin and death. Amen. And you've been given the law of life. We walk in that quickening life. We thank you for it, Lord. We just praise you for it. We rejoice in you. In the joy of your salvation. Hallelujah. That's what the psalmist said. He said, uh, rejoice in the Lord and the joy of his salvation. David said, return unto me the joy of your salvation. Amen. That was one of the things that was the most important to David. The kingdom of God is not me to drink, but righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Amen. So God is joy. He is peace. Thank God for God. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord.
glory and power. He sits at the right hand of glory. Ever making prayer for us. Aren't you glad that Jesus is the one that's covering you in prayer? Not just us, but Jesus. It says he lives to make prayer for you and me. Thank God he prays for us. You know, you could say that Jesus, if you're feeling rough someday, said, Jesus, could you pray for me? You know what? Jesus would. He'd hear you and he would answer you. Because David said, I prayed unto the Lord, and the Lord heard me and delivered me from all my troubles. You got troubles? Well, God's a trouble breaker. Amen. He's a trouble shaker. Amen. And he'll give the devil double for your trouble. Hallelujah. <laughs> Say, the Lord is my trouble breaker. And he is. My maker. My maker. And for me and in me. Amen. Amen. Let's praise him for it. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to your name. Amen. Somebody's praising the Lord out there. I hear him praising the Lord. Praise him. Amen. No, God hears that and he shouts. He loves you to minister to him in praise. We just get our eyes off of us and get our eyes on you, Lord. Nothing during this week, nothing that ever comes in our way or tries to stop us can stop our focus on you, Lord. We get our eyes off us and onto you because, Lord, you're the answer to everything. And so we take time and separate ourselves, Father, because we know that you are the answer and the helper in times of trouble. Your ever-present help. Thank God for the Holy Ghost. His ever-present help in times of trouble. Amen. Just thank you for it, Lord. We just worship you now. And we yield our lives to you as a living sacrifice, which is our reasonable service of worship. You say.
would you kind of say this to anyone from the, the, the chair for it's my delight. My good favor, my personal predestination for this congregation and this place, as you lifted your voice to the praise, and you lifted your voice to worship, and you shouted the victory. So I pushed back the enemy, so I defeated the foes, and you walk forward from this day forward. And when you get in that situation, just praise me, an enemy will be pushed back. This is the way I've always operated, as my people who are in distress, as my people who are in trouble, as my people who are discouraged as me, as they lift their voice to praise me and worship me, so I defeated all our enemies. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Let's yeah. praise Him. Let's do that. Praise you. Praise you. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. Glorify your name. Hallelujah. Honor your master. It's good for us to dwell together, Lord, in your presence. And let the anointing run down us, Lord, together as one, supplying every need of each other. Lord, that's your desire for us to oil each other in the body and keep each other strong and encourage each other, you said, as the days draw near to the end. And Lord, we are encouraged because you're here and we love you. And there is nothing we fear because we know that you have us in the palm of your hand. And that you care for us. We have every hair on our head numbered, Lord. And I thank you, mine are increasing. And anybody else who wants them to. <laughs> Praise God. God, you're good. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Well, let's go out and grab a few people and give them a snoodle and a boogle. Yeah. Tell them hello. Hey. 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 Hey.
Children can dress up in their favorite Bible character, not anything geeky or scary. Okay? We don't proclaim that. Pastor Gina. Praise the Lord. Well, we're changing up things a little bit. Don't you like when the Lord changes up things so we don't stay in a rut? Amen. We actually, um, we changed the date of Brethren Daryl Cope's coming because we know some people were going to be out of town and we wanted to make sure that they could be here for Reverend Daryl Cope's, amen? So he is going to be coming October 26th, the last Sunday of this month. So what we're going to do to change things, on tonight we're going to have a family night. We're not going to have any service tonight, so don't come back down here tonight. And October 26th, when we normally would have a family night, we're going to have Brother Darrell, the a.m. and the p.m. service, 10 o'clock a.m. and 6.30 p.m. Amen? So we're looking forward to that. Praise God. And we'll be getting the word out more to you. But also, we have our next Word of Power class, Word of Power Bible class is starting up again, October the 22nd, our second semester. Amen. And Pastor Sherry is going to be teaching the dynamics of faith and confession. Now, you're going to get your hair blown away in this class. So, um, if you're interested in the class, come to me. Come to Pastor Missy. We'll get you signed up. But we want to get the word out to you. And we've been having our Word of Power Bible School commercials been playing on Joy FM. And hey, you heard it. Good. When you hear it, text me or Pastor Sherry. Let us know you heard it. Pastor Dwayne heard it. I've heard it. Vivian's heard it. And if you hear it, let us know because we like to know it's been played. Amen. And Silver Connections, they're meeting on October 25th, Saturday at noon here in the Fellowship Hall. And see, Miss Rosie, if you have questions, raise your hand, Rosie. If you have questions about that. Amen. Praise the Lord. We're in the overflow. We have one more announcement. Okay, yeah, yeah. Pastor Missy. We have a need in the church, and if anyone here has an extra mattress set, <coughs> two, preferably uh, full size, right? Uh, it's it's for a family in need in the church, and so it's kind of an emergency situation. So if even if you feel led, the Lord may even lead you to uh, to even buy one, you know, but. Hey, we have a need, and we're making the need known, and so please come to one of us and let us know if you can help meet that need. We need two sets, please. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Praise God. This is a good time to take an opportunity to bless someone in the church that needs it. Amen? Amen. Well, how are God's champions today? Awesome. You're anointed, aren't you? Yeah. 
I can tell you I'm fire. But a holy ghost. Ooh, that came out weird. <laughs> I thought that was weird myself. But <laughs> oh man. But anyway, praise the Lord. We're uh, we're excited about what's happening. We're believing God. We're increasing in every area. Amen. Over you guys. We're speaking promotions for you. We've been praying in prayer meetings, job promotions, elevation, uh, increases, blessings, overflow, debt cancellations, miracle uh, monies and healings and deliverances for all of us. Amen. And that God gives you more than enough, not just enough, but more than enough. Amen. He's a God that's too much. Too much anointing, too much uh, money, too much... Uh, fellowship and power in the church and in, in our own families and lives. Amen? But the ushers are available, please. And we also have now um, put uh, um, envelopes on the uh, back of some of the seats. So if you just want to grab one off the back of the seats, you're welcome to do that. Um, but otherwise, the ushers, those handsome anointed men of God, are available. If you will lift your hand, they will be get, uh, glad to give you an envelope so that we can keep the glory of God in the house of God. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, I want to share something about uh, ministering to the Lord with our substance. You know, uh, finances are a substance that brings souls and salvation. Many people don't look at it like that. They don't look at the fact that the the substance brings that. But our tithe and our offering touch the world. Amen. And, uh, you know, you remember in Acts chapter 13 and Paul and and um, Silas and Simeon and uh, I think Barnabas was there. And they talked about how they were all ministering unto the Lord. And what were they doing? They were worshiping God. Amen. And um, then the Lord spoke. The Holy Ghost spoke. You know, that's the kind of atmosphere where the Holy Ghost will speak, is when you're ministering to him. Amen? And he said, set apart for me uh, Paul and Silas and send them on the mission field. And they ordained them as apostles at that moment because the Holy Ghost ordained them and said, they're ready. And so they launched them off and prophetically. And um, so notice this, when they were ministering to him and magnifying him, and make it big of him. See, that's what we do. We make big of him, not of our circumstances, not of poverty, not of things that are coming against us. We just go ahead by faith and bless him. Amen. Amen. And keep our faith, keep our tithe, keep our offerings going into the church. Amen. And keep them going around the world. See, they're not just here. It's not just these offerings touch nations that you give in this place. You are... Uh, omnipresent in probably 29 nations right now at least with your offerings and your time so God is moving us around the world with those things because we tie 10% off of our gross income which by the way a lot of churches don't do but we've done it from the beginning and at, that, at this point since we began 19 years ago or such we've given over a million dollars to Rama now and that's just by being faithful. That's just by, you know, I remember Brother Hagen. We met Brother Hagen, uh, senior, and he was he shook our hands, and he was at camp meeting, and he looked at our tag. And this was when we were on 19, and we had a, a good uh, amount of offering coming in at that time. And uh, he looked at me, and he shook my hand. He said, I know you guys. He said, I pray over your offerings every month. You're on my special table. You're some of the biggest givers to this ministry that have launched out of here. And you know, there were churches of 2,000, 3,000 people, and yet we were still amongst them as giving. And it just shows that it don't take a, a lot of people to do mighty things. It just takes the willing and obedient. And we can change the world together. Amen. Amen. And so we wisdom and direction came when they ministered to the Lord. And they were more concerned about pleasing God than they were self. 
See, when we minister to God, we're not self-minded, we're God-minded. And that happens too in our offerings, that happens when we give and help people in the church. We're people-minded and God-minded. And guess what, I got good news. When you're people and God-minded, guess who gets blessed by that and blesses you back? God does. When you bless others, it's as if you bless God, amen? And so, look at 2 Corinthians with me. Are you there? 2 Corinthians chapter 8. I was thinking you'd just hit the page. <laughs> it says in verse 1 of 2 Corinthians chapter 8, it says, Now, brethren, we wish to make known to you the grace of God which has been given in the churches of Macedonia, that in their great ordeal of affliction, their abundance of joy, even in their deep poverty, overflowed in the wealth of all liberality. They were getting joyful about blessing the kingdom. They were getting abundantly joyful, even in their affliction, even when they didn't have a lot. They were still blessing God. And it said that their poverty, even the deep poverty overflowed into wealth and liberality. And then for I testify that according to their ability and beyond their ability, they gave of their own accord or their own substance. And begging us with much urging of for the favor of participation and the support of the saints. And this not as we had expected, but they first gave themselves to the Lord and then to us by the will of God. Notice this, they gave of their own accord and then they started begging them. Begging them. How many churches and people have you ever heard begging the ministers and the apostles, I want to give more, I want to give more. It's crazy. But it should be the norm for Christians. I'm always like that. I want to give more. I want to bless the kingdom of God more. I want to be able to bless other brothers and sisters more than I'm able to sometimes. So I believe for abundance. Amen? Okay, so look at, uh, you know, you can say amen once in a while. Sometimes I'm wondering, are you, I know you're listening, but, you know. Amen. Okay. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. You say amen to a preacher, it's like saying sick him to a dog. Amen. <laughs> you know, I just, I want to praise the Lord because I was in some other churches a little bit, you know, uh, growing up, people took me to their churches and, and, um, Boy, you better not raise your hand or do anything liberal in those churches. The only time you raise your hand is for the usher to come and bring you, you know, an uh, offering thing. I mean, you know, but I can lift my hands in this church. I can praise God. You know, I can shout. I can dance. And I don't have to be concerned or afraid about anybody looking at me funny. And if you do, I don't even care. Amen. Amen. But sometimes we take it for granted that we're in a liberal environment where people just want the Holy Ghost to be the Holy Ghost. Yeah. And that we're hungry for the move of God. Yeah. And hungry for God himself yeah. to be here. Amen. So he can minister to you too. More than us, we want him to be here. Yeah. Amen. And so we minister to people and we minister to God. Amen. And I'm going to close with this, but in Matthew 24 and 25, Jesus was saying, when you've done it unto the least of these, my brother, you've done it to me. And remember, he said, when I was hungry to some people, it was the goats and the, and the sheep, remember, and the lambs. He said, uh, you know, when I was hungry, you didn't feed me. When I was in jail, you didn't come to me. Um, you know, when I was in need, you didn't put clothes on my back, and you didn't help me. And Jesus said, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. Yes. He asked 
decided their complete uh, spiritual condition, eternal condition by that, by giving. And you know, um, he's talking about money too, because it takes money to go into jails. It takes money to go around the world and clothe orphans like we do and, and start Bible schools in places that just don't have the money to start it up and get all these poor people saved and filled and prosperous and start churches all over the world. You know, it's not all about us. It's about Jesus Christ. And you know, what we've done in this earth will never last. Only what we've done for Christ will last. Because everything in this earth will pass. But Paul said, I press for the mark of the high call of God. And the high call is being substance and soft in this earth. Being able to be on fire for God and committed and faithful in every area of our life. Amen? So we, we can see that Jesus also said, you know, those who have done it unto me and fed me and taken care of me and helped oh, others that needed me. I don't know how many of you have come into this church and were very oppressed. I can name several right now that were like just totally messed up. Uh, amen. Even some on our own staff were pretty messed up. Amen. And uh, But we spent our life helping people. And that's what we do. And uh, but imagine people that weren't not you, but people that weren't willing to be obedient to the Holy Ghost. And then when someone needed to come and get ministered to, there was no minister service. They had to close that church down. Amen. Imagine uh, not that uh, we do that, but because God is our source. But imagine, you know, someone was passing an offering for your paycheck, and you wouldn't get paid if they, you know, didn't decide they want to put anything in there. Amen? Amen. Amen. you got to start thinking from a perspective other than our perspective. There's an eternal perspective yes. to giving. Yes. And as we obey the Lord, the hand of the Lord begins to move in our behalf. And it says he supplies seed to the sower and increases the fruits and harvest of your righteousness. That means souls get saved when you sow your seeds. And it says it'll cause your thanksgiving for the abundant supply that you gave to the kingdom of God. The eternal focus of God's glory. Amen. And so remember, when you give, you're not just giving an offering, dumping it in a pail and doing your little service. No, you're making the difference in eternity. Yes. And so I ask you to be obedient in what Christ tells you to do, not because I need the benefits, but because the Lord asked us all to do that. And we do it together as a body. Amen. We go up, we, we rise, or we fall as the body together. But I tell you, we will not fall, and we will not fail. Amen. And we cannot be defeated, and we will not quit. Amen. Because Christ is on our side, and he is more than enough for us to overcome every need, every obstacle that's in our way, greater is he that's in us. We can do all things, and he's more than a conqueror through us. Because we love him, amen? amen. Nothing will separate us from not death, life, not demons, Amen. not angels, uh, not strife, not division, not people that are pouring circumstances out on us, not the electric bell, nothing will separate us from the love of Christ, Amen. which is in Jesus, Amen. the love of God that's in Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I was trying to say glory and praise the Lord at the same time. Praise the Lord. But, hallelujah. hallelujah. Somebody shout amen. 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 That sounds good. Do it again. Amen. Yeah. Oh. 
Praise God. Well, I'm going to pray. Lord, I thank you for the offerings of your people. I thank you for their faithfulness, Lord, and their obedience and willingness to hear your voice and to believe God with us uh, for increase over every area so that we can be a blessing to the world, Lord. We want to touch more people on the internet and more people and, and have finances to make a lot of modern uh, technology work in our church so that we can reach more and more people. And we thank you it's coming by faith. And that I pray over the people we inject the word of God into their seed as they give in this offering. We put the DNA of the word in there. And I say that every need of theirs will be supplied. Lord, and they'll have every one even taken care of. As you said, Lord, if those that seek you, we shall not even want for any good thing. And you said that you prepare us a table right in the presence of the devil, in our enemy's presence. And we can feast right in the middle of trials and tribulations. So I thank you for deliverance for everyone that needs it right now in Jesus' name. And all in agreement said? Amen. Woo, glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Yes. Yeah. Uh, please bring your tithe up. Thank you.
grab the hand of the person beside us and just pray over them right now. Can we do that? We don't usually do this. We just loose the presence of God on them. Amen. We thank you for each of us today. We thank you that we are God's chosen people. We are a royal priesthood, a holy nation, and we are your chosen and peculiar people. And we show forth the praises and we bless them right now. Bless each one of them. Bless them with the tender, loving kindness and the mercies of the Lord. We thank you that they're being strengthened and fortified. Christ is being formed in them right now. And they made it today. They made it to church. Thank you. They're going to have victory today. The blessing of the Lord is on them and their household. We invoke a special blessing on them. In Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. I believe the Lord is going to meet you where you need today. Because all of us have issues sometimes. We deal with things. We struggle with things. Amen? You know, you, you may even just barely made it here today. I know I did. <laughs> Forgot my notes. I just barely made it. You know, and it's nothing more discouraging to work hours and hours on a sermon and then you can't find your notes. <laughs> I had put them somewhere that I don't normally do, and that was not fun. <laughs> Praise God. Are you blessed? Yes. Say, I am blessed. I am blessed. Every, day Every day of my life, my life. I, am I am blessed. From the time I wake up in the morning to I lay my head to rest, I am blessed. I am blessed. I am blessed. Amen. Now say that to your neighbor. I'm blessed. And say it to yourself. You're blessed. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. He's good today. He's always good. Is he not? Say it. He's always good. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let's go over to Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. I, I love how you, you uh, study, and you study, and as soon as I walked up here and sat on the front row, the Lord changed my message. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. That's okay, because I'm anointed. Amen? And it's good. Romans, are you over there? Romans chapter 8. I love this chapter. This is so good. Isn't it good? Father, we thank you for the reading of your word today. We thank you that your word is all truth. It is the end. It is the victory that overcomes the world. Ha ha! And we're in him, so we're going to overcome the world with him. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. And we thank you that the words will be life to us today. That you'll speak through my lips and meet the need of your people. And unveil the true living God to them today. And that they'll have nourishment in their spirit. And that the word of God will rise up when they're battling situations and times of frustration. Or even feeling like they're going to quit. Lord, the word will rise up like leaven in the oven and making the wonderful bread. And it just smells all through the house. And the fragrance of Christ will dwell in our hearts. And we will rise up and be victorious. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. Verse 1 in Romans 8. Therefore, now there's no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. Are you in Christ today? Yes. Say, I'm free. I'm free. I don't have condemnation. I don't have guilt. Because the blood has washed me clean. Amen? Say it. The blood has washed me clean. Now say the Satan. The blood's against you. That's right. Amen. That's right. Because he'll come against our mind. Amen? Verse 2, for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has, has us free from the law of sin and death. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. That means Ebola, too. Yeah. You hear me now? Oh, that's so, in, that's so contagious. Yeah. Oh, if you look at someone, you get it. No, 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 we won't get it. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. My daughter was talking about, oh, it's everywhere, everywhere. I said, not around our house. Yeah. Not around us. I said, you, you need to get in faith about this. 
You know, what I preach here, I preach at the house and live it. Amen? I said, we, we don't get afraid of that kind of stuff. John G. Lake wasn't afraid when the bubonic plague was everywhere. People were dying like flies. Hundreds and hundreds of people. They were running out of coffins. It was getting so bad. They were wrapping them in blankets and making mass graves. And most of this congregation were dropping. And he went to the Lord and he cried out. And he said, Lord, my congregation, some of them are dying. I love these people. I don't want them dying. And he had a revelation that the law, say it, the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free. That's the part we're focused on. Has made me free from the law of sin and death. Amen? And so he got a revelation and he started laying hands on these people and they started recovering. Now it was incurable. Now nothing is incurable. Can I just have church today? I'm just going to preach what the Lord has on my heart. Amen? He says, he says he noticed when these people would die that when they would expire, there would be this bloody froth that would come out of their mouth. Okay? And uh, it's gross, but it's the Word of God. We're going to get the Word on it. Amen? And so he started noticing. He would lay hands on these people. And he, other people, you know, that were even around these patients were dying. But he was raising the dead up. He was raising the dead. And they were going, what's going on with you? Why aren't you sick? Why aren't you dead? You've been going around and, and people are getting up. He says, well, because of the law. And they said, what are you talking about? He says, well, you just bring some doctors and you bring uh, a microscope and you take that bloody froth that's uh, from this one that's expired and you go ahead and put it under a microscope. This is documented. Look it up on, on Google. Amen? And he said... He said, you put it under that microscope. And they did that. And they saw all the living germs just active. All the things that were killing everybody left and right. Babies. Old folks. Mothers. They were, the, you know, sickness and death. And the devil is no respecter of persons. You know that? He's not nice to the, to the babies. No, it's, and that's what really gets me. I love it. Our pastor says this. Only the devil would make a baby sick. Now think about that if you've been fighting with sin this week or you've been down on yourself. Only the devil would make a baby sick. What's he going to do with you? Right? A baby comes out, they're beautiful, they're pure, they've done nothing. They're sinless. And the devil puts sickness on them. And so he says, he says, you go ahead and put that on that micro, under that microscope and all of it was active. He said, now you take that same bloody froth that you just had under that microscope and you put it on my hand. He said, you, and they're like, no, no, no. He goes, no, just do it. And he said, it'll die. And it did. He said, as soon as it hit his hand, it died instantly. They saw it. Microscopic proof. And they said, wow. He goes, that's the law of the spirit of life. In Christ Jesus, who has made me free from the law of sin and death. Amen. Now let's go on over to Ephesians chapter 1. We'll just, we're going to see how the Holy Ghost does this. This is going to be real interesting. <laughs> Don't you just love it when he gets you out of limb, on a limb and says swing? <laughs> praise the Lord. Go into Ephesians 1. Are you going over there? Yeah. Woo, praise the Lord. Shout, I got the victory. Amen. Amen. Some of you do. Let's say it again on three. One, two, three. I got the victory. Amen. Praise God. So in Ephesians chapter 1, are you over there? Yes. Now these are the prayers that Paul prayed for us. Amen. Now it was the prayers that Paul prayed for the Ephesians church. He prayed some prayers for the Philippians church. But the Ephesians church, there, God's no respecter of persons. It's for us too. It's for Faith Family Outreach Church also. Amen. 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 So we're going to go ahead and it says over here uh, in verse we're going to just start in, um, I love this, whole, we could just read the whole thing. But we're going to start in verse 16. He says, I do not cease to give thanks for you, say me, me. making mention of you, say you, you, in my prayers. Amen. Now listen to this. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in what? 
the knowledge of him. Now that knowledge is true intimacy. That's what that word knowledge means. True intimacy. Amen? And it goes on and he says, that the eyes, say the eyes, the eyes. of my understanding. Say, so I can understand, right? Okay, so that the eyes of my understanding may be flooded with light or enlightened. Amen. Why? That you may know what is the hope of your calling. And what is the riches, say riches, riches. of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. Now, that's a mouthful. He's talking about what we have. When you have inheritance, you have something that's been freely given to you. You didn't earn it. Isn't that right? Say, yeah, I didn't earn it. I didn't earn it. And what is, verse 19, the exceeding, say it, the exceeding, say it again, the exceeding greatness. Now, I want you to say this, the exceeding greatness. Why do I want you to say this? So you get it in your spirit. Amen? You are what you say you are. I can say that the exceeding greatness of his power is working in you all day, but it's going to take root when you say the exceeding greatness of his power is working in me. So I want everybody to say that. The exceeding greatness of his power that worketh in me. So his power is working in you right now. Aren't you glad? There's power that consumes the devil. It says, with the finger of God, the devil is defeated. Amen. God's finger. So we can give the devil the finger. <laughs> Whoa, okay. So we can just point our finger at him, and the power of God is present. That's right. I know, that was real popular, wasn't it? <laughs> Verse 19, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to usward? Usward, that means inside, Amen. Who believe according to the working of his mighty power. Say it, power. power. Now that power is working in us, isn't it? Which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead. And he set him on his right hand in the heavenly places. Okay? Now he's focusing on Christ. He raised him up. He set him on high. He put him in the heavenly places, right? How? How? Far above. All principality, read it with me, far above all principality. Does that mean there's any left? No, it's all principality, right? And what? All power and might and dominion and every name that is named. Now, we can camp on this and preach all day about this. All power, he's, he's far above all principality. That's any kind of evil spirit. Any authorities in this world, any governments, ISIS or anybody else, they're no bigger than the, the, the devil's little toe. They're nothing. They're nothing. Far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named. So whatever the name is that they put themselves into, Jesus' name is bigger. And he's far greater and bigger than anything that the world is ever going to throw at him. Amen. Isn't that right? Yeah. Well, we know Jesus is greater. Yeah. That's right. But do we know the greater one that's on Jesus is also on us? Amen. That's what we're going to find out. It says, so far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this world, oh, now he's even in the future. So everything that's in this world, we can lick it. Yes. And that which is to come. Amen. Amen. So what are we get, getting here? We're getting so much uh, power infused in us that it's not going to be able to whip every single day that we're living on this earth, which means right now. It also means in the one that is to come and the world that is to come. Isn't that interesting? Yes. I don't have any power. You have more power than you know. That's but the right. problem is you don't know that you have the power. He says what you will receive through revelation. Amen. And so we're walking around here defeated and hanging down. And we don't realize that we've got over 220 powerful volts on the inside of us. Amen. And there is no name that's greater than the name of Jesus. That at any name that they can ever ascribe to people, we have been seated with him. So that name is above every other name. Cancer. Typhoid, Ebola, 
depression, thyroid issues, uh, uh, liver disease, come on, anemicness, uh, cancer of any kind, blindness, deafness, loss of hair. Stop your toe. It doesn't really matter. The power is working on the inside of us. Amen? But how does it work? By revelational knowledge. Amen? So far above principality, power, might, dominion, and every name that is named, not only in this world, but that which is to come. So he defeated them. Every, every kind of power, every source of power, he's defeated it, right? And what did he do? And hath what? Put things, all, say all things. Say all things. Say it again, all things. Aren't you glad all means all? I'm so glad all means all. I'm glad it doesn't mean everything but. Right? Everything but what I'm going through. Because isn't that what the devil says? Oh, everybody's doing great. But what I'm going through is a big issue. Yeah. No, no, no. He defeated even the little things that bother us that seem so very, very big. Amen? And so it says, And hath put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things to who? The church. The church. That means we can be the head over all these things. Yeah. Right? Just because we're his children. Wow, do we have some power here. Which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth all in all. Well, no, no, no. He's the head, and, and all that power goes to him because he's the head. Well, I'd like to see a head without a body. I don't see how Jesus is going to be very victorious without his body. He may be the head, but we're the body. And we're the hands of the Lord today. And if there's anything that's been harassing you, then you should be taking authority over it. Don't be letting it walk on you. Amen? Now let's go to Ephesians chapter 3. This is not in my notes any more than the other was in my notes. Ah, Ephesians chapter 3. Paul's praying for us to get this. Amen? Is he praying for us to get this? He is praying for us to get this. Amen. So let's go over are you in Ephesians chapter 3. Yeah. <clears throat> Here he goes again. Verse 16. That he would grant unto you. Well, let's go to 15. Well, let's go to 14. For this cause I bow my knee again to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is derived this name. That he may grant unto you according to the riches of his glory to be what? Strengthened with puny might. No. With might. By his spirit in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your hearts by what? Faith. Faith. That you being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all the saints. What is the breadth, the length, the depth, the height? What is that? And to know the love of Christ. So as high as, the, as high can go, that's how much he loves us. And as low as low can go, that's how much he loves us. And as wide, says the, the, as far as the east is to the west, the east never meets the west, that's how far he loves us. He, he, we can never outgo the boundaries of God's love. Amen. Aren't you glad? Yeah. No matter what you've done, no matter where you've been, we cannot go out those boundaries because he loves us. Amen. Say, he loves me. He loves me. Okay, so to know that, love, right? Verse 20, now unto him who is able, say so he's able, to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ask or think according. Okay, now listen, okay, he's able to do a, Sylvia, I love you, I've missed you, you've got to hug me before you leave, I've been, praise God, You were too gone too long. My gosh, I'm sorry. I just, I was thinking about you. I'm calling her today. I miss her. <laughs> She's been gone. We had a wonderful trip. Praise God. Okay, go back to the word. Sorry. Uh, yeah, sorry, your heart just does what your heart does. Amen. And okay, so where were we? Now unto him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all. Is he able to do it? Yes. What's he able to do? Come on. Exceedingly? Abundantly? Come on, think about those words. What have you been needing lately? Is it going to be exceeding? It's going to be exceeding your expectations? It's going to blow your mind? He's able to do, say it, exceedingly, abundantly, beyond. They had these old drug uh, things. Wow, that's wow. That's beyond my 
I thank you. He is able to do that. Everything that the devil steals, he's the ultimate pervert. He just rips it off from the things of God. People getting drunk, people getting high, people getting wasted. They just need to realize that it came from the Bible. They're not drunk as they suppose. It's only the ninth hour, but they're just very, very filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. Get drunk in the Holy Ghost. Amen. Praise God. So he's able to do exceedingly, abundantly, beyond, wow, what we can ask. So what you haven't even asked, he's already doing it beyond. You ask him to do something, and he's thinking beyond. Think about it. You ask him to bless you, and he, yeah, brother, and he's going beyond. He's not thinking a pair of shoes. He's thinking a shoe store. Hallelujah. Come on. Do you hear me now? He's not thinking a little moped. He's thinking a nice car. Amen? Exceedingly, abundantly, beyond. Here's the clincher. According to the power that works in us. That's where the brakes are. Man, we were driving 500 miles an hour right there, but then we just found the brake, didn't we? That's where the connection stops. It's the power that works in us. If we don't know that we have this, then we aren't allowing that power to work in us. So we want to make sure that we're letting that power work in us. According to the exceedingly abundantly beyond what we could ask or think. According to the power, say it, according to the power that worketh in us. Aren't you glad? Now unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout ages, world without end. They think the world's going to end. It's not going to end. It's going to go into a new realm. And we that have been obedient to rule and reign in this life by one Jesus Christ, we will be able to rule and reign in worlds to come without end. Amen? And the ones that are training to reign now will be reigning victoriously over there. And the ones, come on now, the ones that think that they can get in and get the goody and go out and live any way they want, they're going to be serving us. They're going to be serving us. That wasn't as popular, was it? But it's the truth. And I want to talk about, very briefly, again, about we've come too far to turn back now. Did you ever hear the story about the tortoise and the hare? Yes, ma'am. Come on, anybody ever heard that story? Yes. The tortoise is the turtle, and he's slow, isn't he? And he's going at the starting block of the race. And here's the line, and here's the tortoise, and the hare is right beside him, and the hare is just woo He's just running around. He's running circles around the tortoise, and the tortoise is going <laughs> and, and the race is set before them. Isn't that right? And oh, we know who's fast, and we know who's slimmer, and who's sleeker. And they got that, ooh, they got those bunny feet, and he's just ready, right? And he's got those old little rabbit feet, right? You ever see uh, Bugs Bunny? You, you think of Bugs Bunny? Yeah. And there's that old tortoise. Oh, little George, what are we going to do? <laughs> And, and the gun goes off, right? And that rabbit runs through. I mean, he's running so fast, he's got road runner feet. You can't even see his feet moving, right? And there's a tortoise. That rabbit could have already run the race to win, and the tortoise is just stepping out there. Right? But what do we know about the story? That rabbit gets all cocky and gets all bigoted, and he has no root in himself. He has no essence in him. He just has this flashy, you know, ambitious youth, I think, right? And so he's just, I'm so hyper, I'm gonna win, I'm gonna win, I'm gonna win. Oh, 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 that rabbit, or that tortoise is so slow, ha, oh, oh. And he's laughing, right? Yeah. Did you ever get that story read to you as a child? Yeah. Lift your hand if you know the story. Okay, good, good, okay. And so he just thinks it's so 
so funny that the tortoise is so lame and so slow and that he, he shouldn't even be bothered to be in the race with him. Isn't that correct? And so he at one point sits down and he's got ha 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 and he's like having lunch and drinking a soda and, and, and he falls asleep. He falls asleep. And the tortoise, one foot in front of the other. And one foot in front of the other. And he's halfway through the race and that rabbit's sawing logs over there. And, and he comes around the end and, and, and all of a sudden, He's almost at the finish line, and the rabbit wakes up, remember? And whoo, and then his lickety, fast, white little feet didn't have enough power to propel him to win the race. He didn't win the race because he was not focusing on what he should have been focusing on. And I think a lot of times in life we're that way. We may go, oh, I got all this, I got all this, but are we finishing the course that's been set before us? And I want to talk about that today very quickly. Let's go over to Hebrews chapter 10. Hebrews chapter 10. We have a race before us, amen? And there will be things that come in between us. There will be things that get in our way. But you know what? The Bible says, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher, the perfecter of our faith, Hebrews 12, 1 and 2, talked about that last, last week, that we're focusing on him. He's the author. He's the finisher. That's what that tortoise did. That tortoise kept his eyes on the race. He kept his eyes on the finish line. He would not let himself be deterred. He would not let himself be distracted. He decided, I'm going to do this and I'm going to win. And I don't care what other people do around me. I'm going to keep my eyes on what I'm supposed to be focusing on. And I'm going to tell you right now, all these chairs should be full, but there are people that aren't running their race today. They're focusing on other things. They're focusing on whatever. And you know what? They'll be accountable for that. And I don't say that rudely and I don't say that out of... Um, of, of anger because it really doesn't matter to me. I'm going to fulfill the will of God. And I love them and I want the best for them, but as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. And I'm not playing games. I didn't come to the Lord to play games. I came to serve the Lord. I came to lay my life down before the Lord. I, I was born with a purpose in my life. And from the moment I was born, I knew that there was something that God had for me. And so do you. You know it. And you know that you know that you know that there's a purpose for your life. And uh, quitting in the middle is not going to be the answer. Laying out isn't going to be the answer. Let's not be that rabbit. Amen. Let's be that tortoise. Let's be slow and steady. Slow and steady gets the job done. Amen. Focusing on the prize. The prize is Jesus. Amen. So over there in Hebrews chapter 10, look at this real quickly. But you remember verse 32, the former days. You remember your former days, how you lived? I don't want to go back there. I don't want to go back. That's one of the main reasons why I'm so on fire for the Lord, because I know what the Lord did for me. And uh, I have a loyal heart. I have a loyal heart for the Lord. He did too much for me to, to for me to turn back now. Amen. He's done too much for me, too much for my family, too many miracles. He's touched me in ways that no one in the whole world could ever touch me. And I don't have time to mess around with what's out there. I have only a certain amount of time and I want to focus my energies on what God has called me to do. How about you? Amen. It says, but remember. So he's telling us to remember what we used to be like. Isn't that amazing? You don't see that in scriptures very often, do you? But remember those former days when after being enlightened, you endured a great conflict of suffering. You ever been there? You get suffered and persecuted for righteousness sake? All of us have been persecuted at one time or another, right? He said, remember those days and you endured a great conflict of sufferings partly by being made a public spectacle through preacher uh, through reproaches and tribulations and partly by becoming sharers with those who were so treated the same for you showed sympathy to the prisoners and accepted joyfully say joyfully, joyfully the seizure of property knowing that you for yourselves have a better possession and an abiding one Therefore, do not throw away your confidence, which has what? Great, great, great. Say it. Great reward. great reward. 
So don't throw away the race. Amen. Don't set aside the race. Don't quit the race. Yes. Keep running the race. There may be people that are going so fast. Oh, man, I got this, I got that. Yeah, but where are they now? Where are they five years down the road? Where are they ten years down the road? Are they doing what God called them to do? Woo, I'm talking about running the race. Amen? Yeah. We've come too far. Yeah. We've suffered too much to turn back now. Verse 36, for you have need of endurance, so that when you have done the will of God, you may what? Receive what was promised. Aren't you glad? Aren't you glad we're going to receive what's promised us? For yet in a little while, he who is coming will come and will not delay. He won't delay. He is coming back. The Lord is coming back. And we will be ready, won't we? And, and boy, I, I was saying this, I think it was to Cheryl. I just never thought in my lifetime I'd ever hear about people and people's heads off in America. I just never thought that I would ever hear that in my lifetime. I remember as a little girl hearing about, uh, you know, left behind and the different uh, Christian messages and how they, you know, if they didn't deny denounce Christ or deny the Lord, they would cut their head off. And I thought, oh, that'll happen in another country. It never happened in America. Well, it's slowly creeping in yes, it is. yeah it really is and, and and but by the grace of god our country will last yeah. it's going to last because we're praying it's going to have to last because our faith will receive the promise of god amen yeah. but it's time for us to let that power to work in us and to believe god because it may be that they start you know did you see they want the soldiers to start you know honoring the isis and the islamic rules of fasting it's like they're making that a law it's like you know what we are the children of god and we will not be silenced Amen. and if they try to silence us we will be in, in, in riot the christians will rise up it happened before, and it may happen again. And so we need to be ready. We need to be ready with the word of the Lord on our mouth. And we need to be ready not to be afraid and not to think that things are going to come nigh us, but we got to stand, and we got to stand strong for those around us. It's not the time to flow. It's the time to stand strong. It's the time to know to believe God, that God will heal you, God will meet your needs, God will take care of you. Because if this system falls, we're going to be okay. We're going over the top. And don't you ever tell me that you didn't hear it in here because you're hearing it now. We've taught faith 55 billion ways till it comes out your ears. And so don't tell me you don't know how to believe sick and they don't recover. Don't tell me you don't know how to believe God for your finances. Because it may get dark out there. And we got to know how to pray those prayers of faith. And how to believe God for our healing. And they may say, you know what? There's a run on shortages of food and there's no food for two weeks. What you going to do? I got a swimming pool. I'm going to pray fish in my pool. I got water. I got whatever. God will bring it in. And I'm not worried about it. Not one bit. Because this is what I was born to do. To believe God. And so were you. This is the victory that overcomes the world. It's our faith. Whatsoever is born of God overcomes the world. If you don't ever remember another verse, remember that one right there. Whatsoever is born of God overcomes the world. So that means ISIS. That means Ebola. That means the devil, if he was in a nice suit and looked like the next president of our country. We don't know. Whatsoever is born of God overcomes the world. You're an overcomer today. And I'm a very positive preacher, aren't I? You know, I don't ever, hardly ever bring in news. I don't really watch it because it's... Because that's not what I'm focusing on. I'm focusing on what the Word says. We get enough of the garbage out there. We don't need to hear it in here. We don't need to hear we're going under. And by the way, we're not going under in our finances. We're blessed. We're just reminding you to pay your tithe. Reminding you to give your offerings. You know, just alone, the, the electricity in this building costs $1,000 a month. Just that alone, okay? We're believing for a budget of $25,000 a month. That's just to keep it moving, guys. Because we're doing lots of things, and we want to go further. We want to believe for 50000 because I want lots of missionary checks going out. 
and we can do it. Amen? And we're not going to stay the same. We're moving on and we're getting greater involvement and we're taking the city for the Lord and the state for the Lord. So it's time for us to get over our little family problems. Ouch. It is though. We've got to remember there's people expecting us to be faithful. And that's my message today. Be faithful. Amen. Get faithful. If you haven't been faithful, get faithful. Well, I don't know how to get faithful. You get faith. Yes. You know, they say that there's 365 scriptures in the Bible about peace. One for every day of your life in the whole year. Do you know that faith and faithfulness triples that? Because the righteous man has got to live by faith. And the only way that you're going to be faithful is if you have faith. Amen. Because faithful is being filled with faith. And how do you become faithful? You just do what you say you're going to do. Amen. If you're scheduled to praise on the platform, then you praise. Yeah. If you're scheduled to serve in the back, then you serve. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. If you're scheduled to clean the, the chairs, then clean the chairs. Oh. Amen? Amen? If you're scheduled to be a part of your family, you're there. What would we do for the Lord? People, oh, I can't come to church today, but they are always faithful to their job. Would the Lord bless them the way they uh, treat him versus the way they are on their job? Some people are like, man, I gotta be on my job right away, man. I gotta be on my job. I gotta be on my job. My customers expect this. My employer expects this. But what do we do to the Lord in His house? You know, one of the things the Lord's been telling me, boy, this is not a rebuke, but He's been, if you want to be blessed, then you need to bless His house. You need to bless the house of the Lord and not be so focused on you. Bless the Lord, and He will bless you. Amen? And, and this is a hodgepodge of stuff, but it's still good. Amen? The Bible talks about, in faithfulness, it says, the God of faithfulness. A faithful man shall abound under many blessings. Proverbs 28, 20. Amen? Proverbs 13, 17. Let's go over there. Woo! We're getting somewhere. Amen? You getting something today? Proverbs 13, 17. Everything you get is because you're, still, you're standing faithful in it. Right? If you're married and you're happily married, it's because you've been faithful to your spouse. Isn't that correct? Right. Amen. If you have a child and they're alive and thriving, why? Because you've been faithful to take care of them. Amen. Are you faithful? We are faithful to our relationship with God in our ministries. Amen. We don't blow them off. We don't blow off the church of God. We're faithful. Verse 13. Are you over there in chapter 13? Verse 17. I'm sorry. Verse 17. Yeah, I'll get it. I'm sorry. <laughs> Proverbs 13, 17. A wicked messenger falls into adversity, but what? A faithful man, right? What does it say? Read it to me. A faithful ambassador is health and healing. Do you ever need somebody to be there when you needed them? And they were there? And they ministered yes. healing to you. Yes. They ministered health to you. Yes. You know, a faithful man abounds. But faithfulness is what will bring us through the trial. Amen. You know, that's one of the things that I would say is probably more in my fiber than anything else is faithfulness. Yes. Bible says committing unto the faithful man who will go up and teach others also. And then the 2 Timothy chapter 2. Actually, we could turn there, go over to 2 Timothy chapter 2. But everything that we do is going to require a stick to itness. Yeah. We can't be like that rascally rabbit and be flighty. Oh, I'm like this today, but next week I'm doing this. Oh, I'm going to go over here. Oh, I'm going to go over there. No, 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 no. We'll never grow in the Lord if we do that. Amen? And so today may be more of a discipleship program, but that's okay. Because he says to go into all the world and make disciples, not converts. Converts will fall out, but disciples stick with it. Amen? Amen? A disciple means a disciplined one. Yes. Yes. Oh, yeah. Now, the, the Lord said to go into all the world and make disciples, not converts. I don't know that converts are going to make it in the heavens. 
He doesn't say that they're going to make it. Now they get the, they get saved, but you know it's not a once saved, always saved thing. We can lose our salvation. And we don't talk about that much because we're so busy putting the word and salvation into people that we want to put faith in them. We don't want to put fear. But there is a hell. Yes. Yes. And Jesus spoke more about that than he did heaven because he doesn't want us to go there. There is a lake of fire. Yes. And there is the white throne judgment. Yes. Amen? And so we got to make sure we are not going that way. We want to go where God's going. Amen? Yes. And he said, committing unto the faithful who are able to go out and teach others also. Yes. Anybody turn to that verse? Yes. Let me read it from your Bible, Pastor Steve. 2 Timothy, therefore, verse 1. 2 Timothy 2, 1. You, therefore, my son, be strong in the grace. Say the grace. grace. That is in Christ Jesus. Christ. The things which you have heard from me in the presence of many witnesses, entrust these to faithful men. Not talented. Not pretty. Did you know it's not your talent that impresses God. It's your faithfulness. Amen. 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 It's your faithfulness that will get you through the trial. Amen? It's your faithfulness that will pull you over the hump, saying, I'm just not going to quit. Amen. That's right. We just don't quit. I refuse to quit, right? And he says, entrusting those to faithful men who are able to teach others also, right? Yes. Suffer hardship with me as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. We are soldiers in the army of the Lord. Do you know that? In these last days, we're going to have to rise up and be the soldiers of the army of the Lord. Yes, we're his children first, but we also are the soldiers of the army of the Lord. And it says the next verse, no soldier in active duty, what? <laughs> Entangles himself in the affairs of everyday life, so that he may please the one who has enlisted him as a soldier. Also, anyone who competes as an athlete, he does not win the prize unless he, what? Competes and strives according to the rules. We're talking about running our race. Here it is again. He's focused us on it again. Don't quit in the middle of your race. Don't lay down. Don't be like that rabbit. Stand your ground. Run your race. Be found faithful and just keep on putting one foot in front of the other. Just keep on doing it. Just keep on doing it. He'll give you grace and he'll give you strength in times of need. Amen. And the Bible says, let the weak say, I am strong. Right? Say it, I'm strong. Oh. Let the poor say, I am I rich. rich. Say it, I'm rich. I'm rich. Let the, the sick say, I am healed. healed. Are you healed? Say, I'm healed. I'm healed. We call for what we need. Yeah. And it comes into materialization for us. Right. Amen? Amen? So we got to know these principles. These are things that we have to live by because it may get darker out there. We need to know how to rebuke a storm and it has to stop for us. We need to know how to rebuke famine near our city and it will be a blessed city. Amen. Dr. John's talking about that. He said that's the worst city that the Lord called him into. They were the most impoverished. Now they're blessed. The most blessed in that state. Amen. That's amazing. It's amazing. Why can't we be that way? Why can't we be that way? Why can't we be that way? We are. Thank you. We are that way. We're blessed. Say it. I'm the most blessed on my neighborhood. I'm the most healed in my neighborhood. All my children are blessed. And they're following the Lord. That's all we have to do is say it with our mouth and believe it in our heart. He didn't make it any more easy. It's so easy. When we get quit, we can't get tired, we can't be weary, we can't lose heart. We can't be weary and well-doing. If we fade, we won't reap. But if we don't fade, we're going to reap. 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 Woo! Come on. Start getting joyful because you're going to reap. Hallelujah. Oh, great rewards in heaven because you haven't quit so far. You're moving on. And the best is yet to come.
so. Let me tell you about Edward Kimball. As I get my breath. <laughs> Edward Kimball was a turtle. <laughs> Edward Kimball was a Sunday school teacher. He probably was somebody back there in Tiny Treasures. Somebody back there in the nursery. Somebody back there that no one really saw him taking care of the children and putting the word of God in them. But Edward Kimball was faithful and he had his small little class of seven. And as he was ministering and ministry to them day in and day out, week in and week out as the Lord led him. He was faithful and he did that for many years. And one day, this one little lad was in the class. And this one little lad accepted Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior. Ooh, what shouting and glorious heavenly praise was about in the throne of God. Because that little guy was D.L. Moody. And D.L. Moody, we know, has many books. He's got Bibles. He's got all kinds of Moody Institution, Bible school. He's, he's created great videos for homeschoolers. I mean, this man has won millions, say millions, millions, millions to the Lord. Yeah. We all heard of D.L. Moody, haven't we? Yeah. Well, D.L. Moody was preaching, and, and he was preaching up a storm one night. And I'm telling you, the fire of God came down. And there was another young lad, and that young lad was Billy Sunday. Amen. Anybody ever heard of the fiery preacher Billy Sunday? And so he's a preaching, and he's anointed. And Billy Sunday's moving in, and he got saved under D.L. Moody's ministry. And as he began to preach, Billy Sunday was a fiery preacher. I mean, he was hellstone, hellfire, and preaching, 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 preaching. And ooh, there was this young man that came in, and he was mesmerized by the preaching and the demonstration of God's wonderful word. And he walked down the aisle, and his name was Billy Graham. So now we have millions and millions and maybe trillions by now. Or billions, I'd say trillions. Gazooples. <laughs> Gazilgies. <laughs> I'm making up words. When you get so far past the zeros that they're unfathomable beyond, oh, what was that? Well, I just talked about that. Beyond what you could ask or see. But there's Edward back there in Sunday school with just the seven or eight. And he was just praying, Lord, just use me today. Even if it's just for these little ones. I got saved at a Billy Graham meeting. Amen. Billy Graham is on TV again. And thousands are coming to the Lord by the 80s and the 70s and the 60, 60 programs that they're putting out there. Thousands upon millions are coming to the Lord. Because Edward was faithful. Amen. Be faithful in your tiny treasures class. Amen. I won't be in main service. Well, you know what? Be in main service, but you could sow. Come on. How many times of the word of the week do you need? Come on. Sow to something. Sow to a child. Sow to a ministry today. Amen. We had a great move of God last Thursday in our youth. It was incredible. I'm still chewing on what God did last Thursday. Our youth got exploded into another realm. And I can't even begin to tell you what happened back there. It was incredible. The moving of the Spirit is in us. And it's in us. It's not just in us, but it's in us. But we can't quit. We can't cave in. We don't want to stop, and we don't want to quit in the middle of what the best thing is just around the corner for us to do. I'm sure Edward thought, I just, nobody's going to be helped. I want to go to class. Well, you know what? I'm glad that D.L. Moody went, and I'm glad that Edward was there to lead him to the Lord. Do you remember who led you to the Lord? 
Do you remember who told you about the Lord? You know, we need to keep on speaking about what good things the Lord has done for us. We need to keep our mind absorbed on what the Lord is doing. Not what the devil is doing. Not what the world is doing. We need to encourage ourselves all the more as we see the day approaching. And it is approaching. And so what do we need to be doing? We need to be more faithful than we've ever been before. We need to be more hungry. We need to be more fiery, more stirred up, more open to what God wants to do in our life than ever before. Is that not right? Do you feel that in your heart? Come on, if you feel, hey, it's getting dark out there. I need to really press in. Do you feel that? Or is it just me? Am I in a whirlwind here? Come on, lift your hand. Don't be afraid. It is happening. If it's if you're feeling this and I'm feeling this, we don't want to deny the power of the Lord. We don't want to deny the moving of what he wants to do. Amen? Did you get something today? It was all over, but I hope you got something. Did you get it? We can make a difference in this world. We can be an Edward. Amen. We can be a Willow. We can be a Sherry. We can be a Cheryl. We can be a Rosie. We can be what God wants us to be. We are going to be what God wants us to be. Aren't we? I want to do something different today. I want to stand up again and pray for each other. Can we do that? I want you to find a, a circle of people. And I want you to minister to their needs. Amen. You find someone and gather with them. Maybe a group. See, if we can't do it in here, we can't do it out there. So you can do a circle. Just do a circle. Have a leader. There you go. And you can be two or three or one. Yeah, now ask, does anybody have a need? Maybe nobody has a need. If they don't, then pray for our country. Pray for your pastors. Pray for our church. If you have a need, pray for the need. Walk. You need to run in Jesus' name. But we need jobs in this group. We need faith and run in this group, Father, and we're calling on heaven today. You've got them. You've got a room full of spare parts up there. We need spare parts down here right now in Jesus' name. We need legs that move. Hallelujah. We need minds that are free of confusion of this dark world.
Now we're gonna go in a circle, okay? Go, let's go in a circle here. Uh, yeah, we're just gonna go in a circle, okay? You guys stay together, the groups that we're dealing with those issues, okay? All right, so here, all right, same thing? Okay, now you guys are in the circle too, you're not exempt, yes, okay. Now, what did we say, guys? Well, no, no fast music, brother. You can just forget the music. Okay, so we said that every name that is named, right? Didn't we say that? So that has a name, so that means the name of Jesus is higher, right? Okay? All right, so now I want you, I'm wanting you to see this. I have no pun on that word, but I want you to see this, okay? So every name that has been named above, we have victory over it. We are, because he said that we are seated with him. So that means that, that, that it's down here. Here I am way up here, and it's way down there, right? Okay, so then we're all going to go up one step. Because <laughs> we're all going up, right? All right, and so this is, this is a visual illustration of the healing of power of God. Because God's going to do a miracle today. Do you hear that? Now you say that. God's going to do a miracle for me today. Amen. Everybody say it again. God is doing a miracle for me today. Today. Now, now we're going to do this. And now one of the things that we're going to remember is that he's the healer. And it doesn't matter what doctors say, okay? It really doesn't matter. It doesn't matter at all because they don't even know what they're doing anyway. They're practicing medicine. You know that? They're practicing medicine. Aren't you a testimony of that? If you would have listened to them, you wouldn't even be here today. But because of the Lord, she's here. Now all of us have that testimony in one way or the other, okay? And so you got this. This is simple. It's very simple. The, the miracle power of God is the same as turning the water off and on, guys. It, because God's word never fails. Amen? If we depend on the movement of the Spirit, it's as the Spirit wills, okay? But the Word is always on, okay? And so we aren't depending on just a special, spectacular move of the Spirit. We're depending on the Word of the Lord right now. And the Word says, by His stripes, I am healed. He said that Moses' strength didn't obey him and his eye didn't dim. Okay, so that's what we're standing on right now. And we're also standing on that miracles, signs, and wonders are upon us. He said that. He said, in my days I'll pour up my spirit and signs and wonders will follow us. And then he also said to lay hands on the sick, okay? Uh-huh, you got hands and you may have a, a sick eye. But he said to lay hands on the sick and what happens? They recover. Now, do we know that recovery isn't instant? Recovery is recovering, right? Okay, from this point on, you hear me now, listen. I don't wear any contacts, any eye, I have no problems. I was having problems, and I lay hands on my eyes every time, and it complete, I, I had a manifestation of a miracle. My eyes went from glory to completely, incredibly keen. I mean, I see things that are just, Pastor says, I don't see it! because the Lord touched my eyes. I'm not, my eyesight's not dim. And the Lord has caused me to see eyes be healed right before my eyes. I've laid hands and tumors come, they melt under my hands. That's happened to me. Deaf ears have come unstopped. And so what is going to stop us? It's the power that works in us, right? So it's going to work in us today and it's going to affect the eyes. Okay? So now you lay your hands on your head right now. Amen? And I'm going to agree with you, and then I'm going to come and touch you because I know there's a healing waiting for eyes right now. Oh, 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 that's right. Ushers, come up and get them. Thank you, Father, right now. We thank you. It says you lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. It says the Lord caused their eyesight to be not abating. Their strength did not diminish. But the recreating and effectual miracle power of God is going into their eye sockets right now. All the eye hasn't seen and the ear hasn't heard. What the Lord will do for those whose hearts are strongly fixed on them. We say that you heal me, O Lord, and I'll be healed. Save me, O Lord, and I'll be saved. For you are the one that I praise. Oh, power God going in right now. Affecting a healing and a cure right now. Undo the curse of the law in the name of Jesus. Now say it. I'm healed. Eyes, you be whole. I'm talking to you right now. The miracle going on in my eyes right now. Thank you for the creative miracle that whatever my eyes need, I'm getting them right now. Yes. Thank you for.
Father. Thank you, Father. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. And he said, as you get it, you'll give it to others. You're going to get it to others. That miracle power of God. <laughs> That's it. That's it. Say it now. I thank you, Lord. Just go ahead and praise. Just go ahead and get in your Holy Ghost jump. Whatever you ought to do, it's a done deal. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Somebody get behind him. The power of God's all over him right now. Thank you. 